Hello, this is Dr. David Shorman, and welcome to this overview of Shorman Mathematics. In this video, I'll explain why we decided to create Shorman Math, what Shorman Math is, and how it works. First up, let's talk about why we created Shorman Math. And our company, Digital Interactive, we've always had a passion for teaching, helping families provide their children with a solid college preparatory math education. And that's why back in 2000, we created the dive lectures that teach the Saxon math curriculum, more specifically textbooks authored and or approved by John Saxon himself. We'll get into that more later. Now, from our experience, math is best learned by doing it. For new concepts, though, it really helps to have a teacher and to watch that teacher do the math and then follow along. And back in 2000, new technology allowed us to create digital whiteboard style lectures that students could easily pause, rewind, and fast forward. Really giving students the opportunity to learn at their own pace. And that's one of the key advantages of a home education. A fun fact about our dive lectures for Saxon Math, those actually existed long before other popular video lecture series like Khan Academy today. Now, John Saxon had actually passed away in 1996. That happens to be the same year we started teaching math and science co-op style classes for homeschool students. And the company was eventually sold in 2004. And Saxon Publishers is currently owned by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, and that's a large textbook provider for public schools. When that sale happened, we became concerned that new editions of Saxon would discontinue John Saxon's proven teaching methods and instead focus on teaching to public school standards in order to sell more books. And sure enough, soon after HMH, they came out with new Saxon in name only editions that separated algebra and geometry. And sure enough, shortly thereafter, HMH, they released a Saxon geometry text, and along with these other fourth edition textbooks, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and that confirmed mine and other Saxon supporters' suspicions that HMH would make detrimental changes to John Saxon's unique teaching methods and the ones that made them so effective. These new books had less review, they lacked essential connections between the incremental lessons, they drastically reduced the integration of algebra and geometry, which helps students be able to retain all of their math all of the time, which would make a big difference on a standardized test like the ACT or SAT, where they're required to know all of their math, all their algebra and geometry, all at the same time. So these new additions, they made it clear that HMH was not going to make a very good effort at continuing John Saxon's successful teaching methods. Producing these new textbooks that really are Saxon in name only, they don't even have the authors who wrote them, they don't even have their name in them anywhere. So something to think about here, who would you rather learn math from? A mystery teacher? Probably with a math education degree but no experience applying math in the real world? Or would you rather learn from a former United States Air Force test pilot turned into a flight instructor with three engineering degrees, some, someone who knew which teaching methods worked well so students would retain what they learned and not crash their airplanes. Well, unfortunately, HMH chose the form mystery teacher, and we knew, though, that we wanted to keep John Saxon's teaching methods alive. And those include, you know, teaching math the way you learn a language, a sport, a song, learn how to fly, and so on. You, you have to do those things repeatedly and then review what you did, think about what you need to do to improve, and move on. Now, even before Saxon Publishers was sold, God had put it on my heart to consider writing a new math curriculum. And for over 10 years, we thought about that, prayed about it, researched, and repeated all of that. So one of our questions was, could we write a math curriculum that put Christ and a student's relationship with him at the forefront and everything else secondary? And of course, not to the detriment of receiving an excellent college preparatory math education. And for all their strengths, John Saxon authored or approved textbooks. They have some weaknesses too. All curriculums have weaknesses. In the Saxon textbooks, Algebra 1, Algebra 2 pre-calculus, there's minimal teaching on geometry proofs and just the idea of proof. And 
that's something I feel is an important part of a high school math education. And now the John Saxon authored high school texts are over 20 years old, and they're missing some concepts found on the ACT, the new SAT. It's still possible to use them and do well on tests like that, but they're just not as thorough as our Shorman math is. And their advanced math, the Saxon advanced math book, which is their version of pre-calculus, it's a little bit overkill on trigonometry. It's not a true pre-calculus. If you consider like most pre-algebra books, they have quite a bit of algebra in them, right? So you would expect a pre-calculus book to have a good bit of calculus in it too. And just, you know, fundamentals of calculus. It doesn't have any of that. So for all those reasons and more, God allowed us to create Shorman Math. And so let's talk a little bit about what that is. And Shorman Math is an online interactive math program. It's built on a Christian foundation and therefore it tells the story of math and the amazing Christian foundation of modern mathematics. It's designed to strengthen and encourage a student's walk with Christ and connect them to their world and their creator in hopes of helping them better see what God's plan and purpose is for them. And we also apply John Saxon's proven teaching methods, which would include the incremental development, the continual review, and the integrated geometry with algebra in high school math. We wanted to apply teaching techniques that have withstood the test of time, like John Saxon's, like two of the most famous math and science books ever written, Newton's Principia and Euclid's Elements, which both start with rules and definitions. Those are presented first in a lesson or a chapter, and then those are built upon. Mathematics, like a sport, it's rules-based, and if you don't know the rules, you can't play the game very well. So we begin with rules and definitions. Now, when you look around, you'll see that there's not one specific definition for mathematics. So to define Shorman math, what we did was we looked at some of history's best math educators and mathematicians, and we picked the best from those definitions to come up with our own for Shulman math. And we define mathematics as this, the language of science and a God-given tool for measuring and classifying pattern and shape. Scholars refer to mathematics as the language of science. Because it's a language of science, that means it's an important tool for unlocking mysteries, revealing the amazing beauty found in God's creation. It's an important tool when we interact with other people, too, such as when we buy and sell things. So this God-given tool, by describing it that way, our hope is that that will help students become productive members of God's world and see, see how math is really this thing that we use and use that and their talents to serve God and to serve others. So Shorman Math, one thing we're trying to do is teach students what mathematics is, what it's for, how to solve problems using math concepts. And in math problem solving, it's simply the application of mathematical concepts in a new situation. So in a math course, what we're doing is building on foundations. When we solve a new problem, we're building on foundations that have already been laid. And we're using the mathematical tools developed over the centuries and applying those in new situations to solve problems. And that's what deductive reasoning is about. That's about applying rules is what that is. Contrasting math and science, mathematics is primarily deductive in nature. It's about applying rules. Scientific investigations, those are inductive in nature. Those are about finding rules, discovering new things about creation. And students learn about those important differences in Shorman math. Well, some other things Shorman math is, it's updated with 21st century concepts like computer math and also technology applications. We have a lot of that. With Shorman pre-algebra, that provides a smooth transition from arithmetic to algebra. Any normal pre-algebra course has a pretty good amount of algebra in it, algebra fundamentals, plus a solid arithmetic review. In Shorman Algebra 1 and 2, we teach the content that's on the PSAT, the SAT, and the ACT, all the topics that are covered on those tests. There's over 200 practice problems from those exams in Shorman Algebra 1 and 2, and we actually 
tell you where those are. Because Shorman Algebra 1 and 2 are integrated with geometry, there's a geometry credit that's included in Shorman Algebra 1 and 2. So when you're done with both of those, you also have a geometry credit that you've completed. But just like a language, when you learn that, you don't like stop using fundamental things just because you get better at learning this new language. No, you still use the old things too. And so when students get to Shorman Pre-Calculus and Calculus, we'll still be doing some algebra and geometry things from Algebra 1 and 2. And in fact, students have told me that these courses have helped them on the SAT and ACT. So there's still some of that prep in those courses even though that's not their focus. Shorman Algebra 1 and 2, when you're finished with those, that's also going to prepare you for the CLEP College Algebra and the CLEP College Mathematics exams if you want to try to get college credit while you're in high school. And then Shulman Pre-Calculus, like our Pre-Algebra that has Algebra, our Pre-Calculus has Calculus fundamentals in it. So do Shorman Algebra 1 and 2. There's things about calculus you can do in Shorman Algebra 1 and 2. So we have a good strong emphasis on calculus, which is a super important course in college. 80% of degrees require some calculus. So our pre-calculus course, that will prepare you to take the CLEP pre-calculus exam. Our calculus course, that will help you prepare for the CLEP calculus or the AP Calculus 1 exam. Now, unlike our dive lectures that teach the Saxon Math textbooks, Shorman Math is hosted in a state-of-the-art online e-learning campus, which we'll talk about in a minute and show you how it works, with automated grading, video solutions, lots of other advantages to it. And this e-learning campus style, that's good prep for college math class because most colleges use e-learning now. So using an e-learning course like Shorman Math is going to make it a smoother transition into college mathematics later. So how does it work? Well, let's go take a look. If you purchase a Shorman Math course, you'll receive login credentials and you'll use those to log in to the e-learning campus and here is Shorman Algebra 1, what it looks like, and it will be very similar looking to this on your screen. And you can see on the left there, there's a list of weekly activities all the way through week 30. You receive a two-year subscription. The weeks, those were originally placed like that because I teach live classes also and we have a 30 week schedule and we have a hundred lessons in that 30 weeks but if you're not in the live class and you are doing a subscription that's a self-paced course you have two years to complete the hundred lessons that are here so this is just a way to organize things and so for example we can just click on one of those let's click on week 13 you can see how that's titled you can scroll through that lessons 42 through 45 and a quiz so typical week in Shorman math right here is four lessons and then a quiz at the end that's very standard for how Algebra 1 through Calculus are set up. Four lessons and then a weekly quiz at the end that's based off of those four lessons. When we say lesson in Shorman Math, we're talking about a video lecture and a practice set, a 20 problem, typically 20 problem practice set. Because from week to week things are so similar, you have instructions here, but the instructions are going to stay the same. Except for the four weeks that there's a quarterly exam. Those are a little different, but your normal lessons for a week, those instructions stay the same. If there are new rules and definitions, you'll study those, and there's some flashcards that can help you memorize those rules and definitions. And then there's a video lecture. So for example, we could click on Watch Lecture 42. And that's going to open up and start playing. Or you can press the play button here, and you see things start to appear. But one of the great things about the video lectures is that you can go at your own pace. You can pause it, you can fast forward it, and rewind it back anytime you need to to go back over something. 
You can see this particular lesson is a geometry lesson on volume and part B on surface area. A typical lesson has several examples in it and you can see how things are just come up on the screen just like a digital whiteboard or a regular blackboard or chalkboard in a classroom. So that's how things are presented. And that type of a format where it's just coming up a little bit at a time, a student, it's easier for them to track that. If they need to, it's very easy to rewind and watch something again and make a note of things. With Shorman Math, we're very big on students showing work, and so we'd expect students to be working along, engaged, and solving problems along with me here, and not just watching a problem be solved. That would be a very passive way to do math. You, you want to be active and pencil to the paper solving problems along with me. And Good note taking too means that you wouldn't write everything that you see on the screen there, especially when there's a lot of text like that. You want to pick out a few key ideas and you learn to do that better as time progresses, as you, as you do more and more lectures watching those. You, you'll learn to pick up what are the key ideas, what are the most important things that I want to write down. Like maybe where it says there, use 3.14 for pi. That's always a good reminder in Shorman Math. We always use that rounded to two decimal places form. So everybody's using pi the same way. When you finish a lecture, you can just let's move the screen down a little bit here. You can go back and see we're back on that week 13 page where we were doing the example from. And you could also click here. This is a textbook, a PDF. Looks like a textbook kind of chapter. And you can look at that too as the same examples are presented in the video lecture. But if you needed that for some reason, we recommend, of course, watching the video lecture because that's how you're best going to learn the math with that explanation that's going along with it. But you'll notice if you ever use a reading assignment here that the examples that you see here are the same ones that are in the video lecture. And then at the end, here's the practice set. But again, what I would want you to do is go to part three here in your lesson assignment. Remember, a lesson consists of the video lecture and the practice set there. And you'd click on this lesson 42 practice set. And here's your auto graded practice set. And it calls it a quiz here, but it's really not a quiz. It's not a timed thing or anything. You can use your notes, you can use other educating resources as you move along. Notice some other things that it says there you have four tries to get a problem correct receiving a 25 percent penalty each time you miss an individual problem so that four tries to get a problem correct we refer to that as true practice which we'll talk about a little bit more and there's step-by-step -step solutions available after you click submit all and finish after you're completely done with the practice set video solutions and a, a PDF of step-by-step -step solutions. And notice the grading method. There's different methods for grading. And this is first attempt. So the, that means you can take this practice set again if you want to, and it won't be recorded as a grade. But you can do it just like to practice for the quarterly exam. That's a good idea, things like that. But only the first attempt is recorded. So we press this attempt quiz now. This is what Educadium calls them is a quiz, even though this is really a homework set is, is what that is. And so you see the problems here. And notice also there's a link you can click that is a similar problem to the one presented here. Remember we talked about that deductive nature of mathematics before. It's applying things you already know in a new situation. So if you took good notes and you understood what you were doing on the lecture, you may need just a little refresher. You're like, how do I do a pipe problem like this? Well, click on the example and you're like, oh yeah, there's the formula down there for the volume. I just have a different radius and height here. And so I'll, I'll just look at those differences and notice too, it, it opens it up in a new window there. So you can just click on that window and go back to the original problem, click back over if you need to. And you know, you see those steps, you should be solving this on paper using similar steps. And 
then you just click once you're done you click and then click submit and if it's wrong it tells you immediately if that's wrong but notice it doesn't spoil you with an answer you're not like oh the answer is this one or whatever Note at the bottom it says the submission attracted a penalty of 0.25. So you have 0.25 out of 1 on that individual problem. 0.25 points out of 1 taken off. So you can try again. And so maybe you think that's the answer. You can click. And you're, this is not a guessing game here. You would want to go back, watch the lecture again too. You can click right here and it's going to bring up the video lecture again. So you can fast forward to that example 42 type of problem and listen to it and watch it being solved again if you need to do that. If you don't understand at all, we expect you just to move on. And then when you're completely done, after everything's done, then let me just move this up a little bit. You can see down there on the bottom right, submit all and finish and click OK. And that's going to bring up your score. Of course, here I'm just doing an example. That score is zero there. But PDF solutions, you click there, and you can see step-by-step -step solutions to everything. And then I can arrow back if I want to, and I can click here to see video solutions. These are step-by-step -step video solutions to every problem. And there is an audio explanation that goes along with it. If there's anything in particular math-wise that I, I want to describe, um, I'll do that during this time as well. And I just kind of go through that PDF solution and explain that. The purpose of each of those steps is explained. On problems the student didn't understand, we expect them to correct their mistakes. And typically, you would do that with a red pencil or pen and, and not just say, oh, answer is 10, I got 5, but the answer is 10, or write a 10 down. No, you'd want to solve the problem correctly. You'd want to write down the correct steps and solve it correctly, as that's the best way to do it. So in Shorman Math, you're spending less time on just being stuck on a problem, 5 minutes, 10 minutes max on a problem. If you don't get it, you just need to move on and then you watch the solution, you listen, you try to solve it there, and instead of wasting a bunch of time just being stuck on it. The homework is weighted low, and that is beneficial because this is practice. We call these practice sets for a reason, and we believe this is true practice. When, If you have a good coach for something, they're not going to want you to just quit and move on if you mess something up. They want you to have a few tries to figure it out. And so that's one of the reasons we do the 25% penalty on an individual problem. You get four tries on a problem. We believe that's, you know, if you do that right, that, that's going to be true practice for you, better practice than just giving you an answer right away or using the solutions manual as a crutch and having that right in front of you as soon as you mess up you just go look at the solutions manual and a good coach doesn't expect mastery right away either that's that's another reason we have four tries on a problem and that's another reason in practice at 43 you're gonna see problems from practice set or from lesson 42 and in lesson 44 you'll see problems from lesson 43 and 42 and so on and giving you time to build a skill. That's what true practice is about. So going back to this page, you can scroll through once you're done and you know, notice it automatically grades it. It keeps record of every action that you did. So there's like way more information than you'd ever want to know about how a student was answering questions. And you can see like on this first one where I had like two different attempts that I made and, and both of them wrong and you can see what the grades were there and everything but all of the problems are shown there and as we look through this notice too you can you can see how how we have that continual review that true practice that we like to call it so here's a problem from lesson 36 and you can always tell some information about a problem one in the image here you can see this little subscripted number that's the lesson the problem came from and then 
up here in the help area, there's a little more specific detail. So like this is real similar to practice set 18.5's problem. So you can click on that. And in this case, that'll open up the problem and the solution there. So you can see how that particular problem was solved. So just continuing to scroll down here and see some geometry problems, some art history types of problems in here too on one point perspective. That's an interesting geometry application to art there. But anyways, uh, we have interesting things like that in Shorman Math. And notice this problem 20 from lesson one. So we're re reviewing all the way back to lesson one here, almost halfway through the course, right? This is lesson 42 is what we're doing there. With Shorman Math, you have time to develop your skill. And because of the helps that you have along the way too, a typical Saxon lesson was 30 problems long. A Shorman Math lesson is 20 problems. We found that the true practice method that we have done properly students don't need as many problems to solve. Think about it, a hundred lessons are in a typical Shorman Math course. Calculus has 80. 20 problems a lesson, that's 2,000 problems in a course. If you can't figure out your math with 2,000 problems plus all the example problems that you do watching the lecture, plus your quiz, weekly quiz questions, plus your quarterly exam questions, you're looking more like 3,000 problems now. That is plenty of math. If you do this course correctly, if you do your homework the right way, not just guessing on problems until you get the right one on a multiple choice. And notice also there's more than just multiple choice going on here. There's short answer types of problems like here. So sometimes we want you, and there's always specific instructions there, sometimes we want you to type in the result there. And that can be a little more challenging because you don't see all these choices in front of you. And typically we'll have short answer type problems after you've had some time to practice and after one or more lessons of practice. And we'll also have sometimes some matching problems. There aren't any in this particular lesson, but there's matching problems, true, false, things like that as well. So moving back now, we'll go back to the course homepage here and just look at our different weeks there again. And so again, typical week is four lessons and then a quiz at the end. So you can always see that. And down here at the bottom, there's some instructions for the quiz and then your week one quiz and instructions, some more instructions there. Notice the grading method, it's highest grade. Notice there's a time limit. So that's a little bit of a difference on a quiz compared to a practice set is there's a time limit. But at this point, you've had four lessons to practice these problems that are on the quiz. They're based on the ones that you covered that week. And notice also we give you some specific problems to look at, to review, to study. So you want to study for your quiz. It's going to have the 25% penalty, it's open notes and open educating resources. You can use those. The one kind of more pressure thing is the time limit on it, which is actually pretty long. And if you've done what you were supposed to that week, studied well, then you can get it done in half of that amount of time. No problem. Scrolling back up here, let's take a look at week eight. That's where a quarterly exam is. And we have some research that you can read about, about how proper and effective studying, you know, the quarterly exam is over everything you covered that quarter. So it's a big deal. That's why we have a whole week dedicated to it. And you will learn to study for these and, and you'll learn to improve. There's two practice exams, full length practice exams. Typically they're actually a little bit longer. They're not timed. They're just practice exams. We expect you to try to do them in an hour. There's instruction sheets for completing the practice exams. And we could just click on one of those. Remember, we were talking about the grading methods. We have the ability to change the different types of grading methods. And we treat these like a homework grade. And again, it's practice. And on these, your highest grade is recorded. And so that means you try it the first time, you get an 80. 
let's say, you correct your mistakes and you go and you take it again. And hopefully you can get a hundred on the second try. And so it's like giving you a free hundred and, and rewarding you for practicing well for your actual exam. So that highest grade is recorded on those practice exams. So we can go back and take a look at the quarterly exam. And again, there's instructions for how to do your quarterly exam there also. And Notice here the grading method is the average grade. And notice you're allowed two attempts. And so here, one hour and 15 minutes for the time. See that there? One hour and 15 minutes. So it is timed. No notes or anything. You can use a calculator and a pencil and your paper, of course. But show your work on a separate piece of paper as you solve problems. And it should be no problem if you've studied well no problem to do this in an hour probably or less and you'll have plenty of time and so remember too that these exams quizzes practices everything has been beta tested before you've done it so we know that the average student not the one who makes perfect hundreds on everything but the average student can complete the exams and things in the time allowed and even here, you have two attempts, and, and so let's say you got an 80, your first attempt, and a 100, your second attempt. So you don't get an 80 on it. You get rewarded for going back and reviewing and correcting your mistakes, and then you go and you make a 100 the second time, and then your average is a 90. And so it's like you got 10 extra points for putting in a good effort to fix your mistakes and review and correct yourself and improve yourself. And... You know, we can't do this for every student here, but like in my live classes or in a college class, your professor, after you turn in your math exam, they may give you partial credit in different places if you've shown your work well, if they can tell where you made a mistake and you made like one little careless mistake. Uh, they'll give you partial credit on a problem instead of it being completely wrong. And so this is kind of our way of, of doing that for you. So you go back after you're done with your first attempt, you correct your mistakes and you figure out what you did wrong and then you take the exam again and you average those two scores and normally the second attempt would be higher than the first one and so that you get some extra points back there on that exam. Now some other things just the way our practice sets are set up. Let's go back to that week 13 and look at that practice set Lesson 42 practice set again. And actually, I'll just open up the textbook pages for it so we can just see all of them together right here. And we see some, this is Algebra 1 again, remember, and so we see some geometry problems here. We see algebra and geometry together, just like it would happen on an SAT or an ACT. So you're responsible for all your math all the time. That's going to make it easier to do well on an ACT or SAT test because you're used to doing math that way. And look at you've got conversion factor problems here. You've got a, an art related problem there. And so you know, we have lots of different application of math in different areas. And you know, Saxon was really good about conversion factors, teaching students about those. That's a real big science application area. And we've kind of expanded that to, to have currency conversion just because our world is getting smaller now people travel a lot more. We, we need to be familiar with different currencies and how to convert from one to the other. Uh, notice there's a computer programming problem right there. This one point perspective question on the Sistine Chapel. You know, modern math has a big Christian heritage, but a lot of people don't know about that. They don't know about people like Leonard Euler, Isaac Newton, the Bernoulli family all solid Christians and, and amazing mathematicians. It's good for students to know the Christian heritage found in modern math, I believe. So, a hundred lessons in a course like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and if you're doing the self-paced subscription, you're not worried about getting it done in 30 weeks. That's just there for organization purposes, these week numbers. 
all of them set up very similarly daily lessons which include a lecture that you take notes on and a practice set weekly quizzes and quarterly exams automatically graded practice sets quizzes and quarterly exams you don't have to do the grading speaking of grading anytime you want to see grades let's go to course home and scroll down click on grades right there I don't have anything in here this is like me I'm the administrator I'm not taking the course but this is where you would go and any blue highlighted things you can click on those and you can see all of the detail of that particular practice set or quiz or quarterly exam whichever it is and so you have all that access 24 7 anytime you log in parents you can you can keep track of grades and there's a certificate you don't want to click on that until you're finished with the entire course because the course gives you a cumulative grade so like if you're making hundreds on everything and you finished through week 15 halfway through the course the cumulative grade would say 50 and so you just have to times that by two to see what the actual grade is so it doesn't give you like a, a running average it just it gives you a cumulative score so when you're completely done with the course then here at the very bottom there'll be a course total down there and that will be your final grade and after one quarter you can multiply that by four to see what like an average on a hundred point scale is after halfway through week 15 you can multiply it by two and so on but here under grades you have access to everything all the time and that's found on the course home page down here well that's it for this overview of Shorman Mathematics thank you for watching you can find more information about Shorman Math at diveintomath.com forward slash Shorman Math. Notice there's two N's there. And don't forget too, you can earn college credit with CLEP and AP exams. And we have a CLEP professor course for science and math courses. We have a college algebra CLEP professor course that has practice exams on it and more lessons with practice problems and that's something you take after Shorman Algebra 2. We have a CLEP Pre-Calculus that you take after Shorman Calculus. We have a CLEP and AP Calculus 1, which would, which would be something you would take after Shorman Calculus, allowing you to receive college credit while still in high school. And so you can find out more about our CLEP professor courses at diveintomath.com forward slash CLEP AP Prep. Well, God bless you, and thanks again for watching.